What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a full look at this 2019 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. Huge shout out to Speed Street 704 for providing his personal vehicle for today's video. This is a 755 horsepower supercharged monster and we're gonna take a full look, so let's check it out. And the model that we're looking at today is a 3ZR, finished off in Sebring Orange, is equipped with the seven speed manual transmission and had an original base MSRP around $140,000. Underneath the hood, this features a 6.2 liter supercharged eight cylinder engine that pumps out 755 horsepower and 715 pound feet of torque. This engine is paired to a seven speed manual transmission, sending the powers to the rear wheels through an electronically controlled limited slip rear differential. And with a curb weight around 3,600 pounds for the convertible, you can expect to get zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. The overall wheelbase is 106.7 inches with an overall length of 179.8 inches. We get a height of 48.7 inches with a width of 77.4. And all running off an 18 and a half gallon fuel tank, you can expect to get 13 miles per gallon in the city and 19 out on the highway. This features drilled carbon ceramic disc brakes in all four corners, measuring 15 and a half inches up front and 15.3 in the rear. We get six piston Brembo brake calipers up front and four pistons in the rear. We get a staggered set of wheels measuring 19 inches up front and 20s in the rear, all wrapped in Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. This generation ZR1 features the largest Eaton supercharger to date with 13 PSI, and that all helps this car get a top speed of 212 miles an hour. The front end has an extreme appearance with the large carbon fiber front splitter. We get large mesh openings in the center and each side of the grille to allow maximum cooling to all of the radiators. This also features two front forward facing cameras for the track recording system. We get bi-xenon headlights with LED daytime running lights, your classic Corvette logo in the center, and the whole front bumper flows very nicely to the hood. You can see the carbon fiber in the center. The entire hood is constructed out of carbon fiber. The center piece, however, is actually the top of the supercharger, which is an amazing touch for the ZR1. The hood also features the ZR1 logo up in the top portion of it, and then as we make our way to the side profile of the car, we get a carbon fiber vent in the front fender, all wrapping around the black wheels, which give it a great contrast. Matching to the front splitter, we get a carbon fiber side skirt along the entire side of the vehicle. And if you look closely, that Sebring orange is actually painted within it, which has a really nice touch to it. We get another functional vent in front of the rear wheels and then a sharp body line along the top of the door panel all the way to the rear end of the car. The convertible version has a really good look all around and it really looks natural with the top down. This particular spec has the optional carbon fiber high wing that creates 60% more downforce than the Z06 with the Z07 package while still maintaining a similar amount of drag. It has a super aggressive design to it just like within the front splitter. We got sharp points in the center of it, large end plates on it, and then a nice beveled edge in the entire front of it. We get more sharp lines on the top of the deck lid within the rear, even have carbon fiber pieces behind the headrest, which is a great touch to it. This car has a ton of carbon fiber all throughout it. We get the clear LED taillights, gloss black trim around them, and then all gloss black for the lower rear diffuser. We get the center exit quad tip exhaust system, your standard backup camera, another ZR1 badge, as well as the Corvette logo. And then all finishing up with the third brake light and a lip spoiler. So that's a good look at the overall exterior as well as a ton of the performance specifications with the new Corvette ZR1. This exact specification with the manual, the convertible, and the color, there's only 17 that were made in this exact spec. So super rare one to see. I love the overall styling. Comment down below, what do you guys think of the high wing, all the carbon fiber on it? The hood is a really cool feature. The previous ZR1 gave us a little hint with the plexiglass cover in the center of the hood and you could see the engine cover on the supercharger. I think they did a much better job now actually showing us a giant piece of carbon fiber. Now before making our way to the interior of the vehicle, we can get a good look how it looks with the top up. Definitely has some great styling all around with the top up or with the top down. So now hitting the unlock button, a really great feature, I can hold down this convertible top button and we can automatically make the roof go down. You'll notice the cover barely clears the spoiler so they really designed it nice and tight and we can use this area as some extra storage which is an awesome touch. The interior door panel features black leather as well as black Alcantara. We have orange stitching all throughout it. Your window controls are located up here with an electronic button to open the door like all the Corvettes. A little bit of storage space down below as well as the Bose audio system. Memory seating as well as your lock and unlock. And then making our way inside we have Corvette along the door sill. We get a great look at the competition seats. Black Alcantara in the center with black leather along the sides. Orange seat belts and more orange stitching. Carbon fiber up top with the Corvette logo. Really great looking seats all around. These are power seats as well with all the buttons located on the side. And then there is a manual release handle for the door in case the battery is dead. And then inside the car we're greeted by a two-tone steering wheel finished off in carbon fiber and Alcantara. It's a flat bottom design and has more orange stitching on it. And then with my foot on the brake and the clutch, we can go ahead and start it up. On 
On the left and the right back side of the steering wheel, we have your active rev matching controls. You just hit these like you would in a paddle shifting car to activate rev matching. We have Bluetooth and audio controls along the steering wheel. And then over on the left side, we have all your mirror controls. You can adjust your heads-up display. The convertible top button is down here as well. We have a trunk release button down here, and then there's carbon fiber surrounding the entire dash. Up top, we have more Alcantara and orange stitching, and then the heads-up display piece. Great look to it, more carbon fiber coming to the center. We have the touchscreen display system with all your settings. We have your audio, navigation, phone, everything like that. And then a really nice feature is the PDR. You can see a lot of different things for when you are taking this car out on the track. You can swipe over for more settings along this side. And then hitting the home button, we can go back to the main screen. We have climate controls in the lower portion with LCD screens that'll pop up when the car is on. Then we get the seven speed manual transmission using seventh gears actually just like in reverse. It's more of an overdrive gear. You push it over and then push it even harder over to get into seventh. We get an Alcantara shift boot on it, and then opening up this, we have two cup holders. We have a 12 volt right here, electronic parking brake, and then your traction control as well as your mode selection. Just twisting this left to right, you can change the different driving modes. And then in the center, opening this up, we have the center console. Pretty good amount of space in here for a phone or a wallet. And then over on the right side, we have the grab handle with more Alcantara. Alcantara over on the passenger side. And then pressing this one button, we can open up the glove box. Pretty good amount of storage space in here, as you would expect. And we can get a really good look at the overall interior with all the black leather and Alcantara, all the orange stitching, the carbon fiber on the seats, and you even do have a climate control screen on the right side. We get a little bit of storage space behind each seat, and then as we make our way to the trunk, you can use the key fob, the button inside the vehicle, or there is a button down below right in the center. Just by pressing that, the trunk lid will open up. You can see the amount of space in here is smaller than the coupe, of course, but if you do open up the convertible top with the roof up, you will have quite a lot of space. And then to close this, it does feature a soft close. Just latching it a little bit, it'll automatically lock. So slowly getting up to speed just to get our bearings with the car. The view out is so aggressive. Looking at the hood, that carbon fiber piece is right there. You have some crazy contours in. I can see the ZR1 badge. The heads up display is an awesome touch for these cars. It really helps you know all the stuff that's going on within the car. But the overall comfort right now, this thing is pretty comfortable to be in. The seat is really easy to get into a good spot. You have an adjustable steering wheel, all power, so super easy to do. And then hitting the paddle shifter either left or right, that turns the rev matching on. It'll automatically do all the rev matching for me, and it does change the gear to a yellow color. Just getting a little bit of the sound of the car. Yeah, it has a good sound to it. So with that said, we're gonna go over into sport mode. So now we have a nice sharp turn. Those carbon ceramics, wow. They really stop the car. Just hitting them, wow. <laughs> Those brakes, oh my goodness. Those are insanely good brakes. We also have the brake hold for a manual. That's a nice feature. Those brakes though, that is unreal how good they are. <laughs> With the convertible top, we're gonna go ahead and put it down. Uh, you can do this while going under 30 miles an hour. So now that I'm at 30, the convertible top is gonna go down. We'll get a good look at what this car is like with the top down. But so far driving it around like normal, I've driven the normal C7. This is already so much tighter and more aggressive feeling. We'll do a little bit of an acceleration now. That was just a small second gear pull. That thing gets up to speed so quickly and it's so muscular sounding. Rev matching sounds so good. <laughs> I hear a little bit of that supercharger whine too. That is awesome. But then top down cruising going about 52 miles an hour. I'm really not yelling too much to the camera. It's pretty good in here as far as wind goes. I can feel it on my head a little bit. I can feel it within the cabin but there's definitely not an intrusive amount of wind or anything like that. Visibility with the top down, of course, is really good. I can actually see everything very well. That spoiler is right there. That is so crazy to see that thing right there. But then the overall layout of everything, the steering wheel's in a great spot. The Alcantara feels so good, a ton of grip on it. All the switch gear and all the buttons that you press are laid out very nicely as well. Well, this is definitely a cool car just cruising. That sound is insane. Speed from first gear. 
good sound. It's powerful, as you would expect. Going through the gears, though. thing gets up and goes with no issue. And then the actual seats for me in the competition seats, I really like the overall fit of them. The bolsters hug you really tightly. They're comfortable. They have a lot of lumbar support and everything. So even for a long road trip, these are really comfortable. I love the design of them too. So now we'll get back on some more fun roads. But going through the gears a little bit. And you can tell this is definitely a car for the turn. Oh my gosh, those brakes. Some sharp turns. Wow, that sounds good. Those brakes are unreal. Man, and the steering is so direct. There's no vagueness or anything. Exactly where I want to point the car. so much fun in this car. I really can't find a complaint about it. It's a little bit weird when you first get used to like the driving position. The hood is really big. While the visibility is really good with a top down like this, it's a little bit hard to see out of when you first start getting used to it, just the overall configuration of it. <laughs> Had to do that. But this is a really sweet car. I think the overall handling, the performance is definitely there. This is a super car killer. This thing destroys cars out on the racetrack. But just the overall layout, everything, the way it's designed, the fit and finish is really good. I think the quality is absolutely spot on. Chevrolet did a great job making this car feel like a high-end car. They put a lot of good materials in it. Everything fits together nicely. There's nothing cheap feeling about it. There's no weird squeaks or rattles or anything like that. But then to finish up, we're gonna go ahead and put the top back up to get one last idea of what it's like with the roof up. With the roof down though, that is enjoyable to cruise. Definitely nice with the top down. I love the convenience of being able to do this while driving so you don't have to worry about getting stuck in the rain or anything. And then the extra storage space with the trunk and the space where the convertible top is stored, that is another great feature. But now with the top up, you know, visibility is still pretty good in all honesty. For being a hunkered down car, you're sitting very low in it. You can easily see out of the front and the sides. Looking over your right shoulder, you have to get up a little bit. I think you probably have noticed me doing this a little bit. The spoiler actually isn't in the way. It's high enough to be out of the eyesight of other vehicles and everything like that. Looking over your left shoulder is the only blind spot, I would say, just because the convertible top is very squared off, while in the coupe you have more of a window back there. But then just a little bit of normal driving before we do one more acceleration now with the top up. I can see this being like a GT car. You can actually cruise with this. The suspension isn't harsh or anything like that. It's very comfortable hitting all these normal bumps. You could go on some long road trips with this, and then dialing it up into the track mode. Of course, you have the magnetic ride suspension, so it's doing a really good job making it to where there's no body roll, and yet being a very comfortable ride. The clutch the pedal is also really easy to get used to. It's not even heavy or anything. But then in second gear... Wow. There is no interruption in power. Even being a manual where there is a delay compared to an automatic of some sorts. Man. Honestly, I can't get over the brakes. That is so nice. Carries speed so well. That's probably the biggest thing I'm taking from this car is the power. It is so quick. But anyway, that is going to wrap up taking a look at the 2019 Corvette ZR1. Huge thank you again to Speed Street 704 for providing his personal car for today's video. I'll have his Instagram and YouTube channel linked down in the description below. Definitely check them out. But this is an absolute monster of a car. Finally driving the fully loaded top of the line Corvette. I've driven the C7s, I've driven the C6s and C5s. They're all pretty darn good cars. The normal Stingray is a great car for sure. Pretty quick with mid 400 horsepower. But when you're in 750, Wow, yeah, that is that is.
is the car to get. <laughs> anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a huge thumbs up, smash the subscribe button. We will see you next video.